go, you know, I have them already. Well, you, yes. Yes. Oh my god, I don't know. Alucard's illiterate, he can't read. No. <laughs> of course, the Dracula one. Listen to them. The children in the nights. What music they make. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> there is, oh, see, you're just making me go down memory lane. There, I, I got this record from, uh, it, it's, Disney made a whole bunch of, like, Halloween records, and most of them are sort of cutesy and fun or whatever. Some dude in, like, the late 60s, early 70s had way too much fun, and he made this disc, it's called, uh, it's called Sounds from the Haunted Mansion. It is the scariest damn thing I have ever heard and there is no dialogue. It's like a lesson in sound design, and it is absolutely terrifying. I don't know how the hell it got past the Disney censors. They must have been in the 60s on acid or something, and this got through. Um, but it's, it, I, I use it as like, uh, because I also do sound design, I'm like, this is how you tell a story with no dialogue, just with sound. And the first, it starts with, it has little, little sections, and it, it's about 30 minutes long, um, and the first section is, is the, the night creatures, and that's the little quote before it starts with the thing. It's really mm -hmm. Yes. Would, would I play those sounds while I'm in the shower in the middle of the night? I don't think so, but... I, I don't usually take showers in the middle of the night, but... No. I, I like to take them in the morning. I'm a morning shower person. Some people like to take them at night before they go to bed, and then, you know, because their hair is wet, and they don't want to dry in the morning, yeah. But no, my hair's short, so I like to take a shower in the morning. It gets me up. Oh yeah, the first time I got it, me and my brother sat in my room, put the record on, turned, it was like afternoon, but it was like one of those afternoons where it's like weirdly dark, and the shadows just keep getting longer. And we sat there and we listened to that whole 30, 45, and, and my brother has hated me ever since. <laughs> um, but then when I did this, I, actually eBay's a fantastic thing. I mean, again, we bought this when I was like eight, right? So that was 1980, okay? That's when we had this record. And it disappeared, like I just could I had a cassette tape of it that I kept for a long time, but it was getting weird and old. And sure enough, I got on eBay and I found the damn thing. And I ordered it, and then I got myself a record player, which is hard to come by these days. I got myself a, a really nice audiophile record player, stripped down, and then I used my old uh, like audiophile two-channel amp that still had a phono preamp in it, and I recorded it into my Pro Tools rig, and and uh, at like you know ridiculously high recording levels, and it sounds fantastic, and I'm, and and it, and it has all the you know pops and crackles and everything, and I'm like, oh, I can go in there and clean it out, and all my friends are like, don't you dare, <laughs> leave all of that in there, it sounds like parchment, it's wonderful, I was like, okay, I'll leave it in. <laughs> Talison wanted a copy of it, we had, we had a, we had a uh, pumpkin carving party one Halloween, and, uh, and I played that, and they were just like, what the hell is that, <laughs> I'm like, that would be Disney, <laughs> Disney used to be scary, isn't it such a shame? I mean, have you seen Fantasia and the Chernabog? Oh my god. Terrifying. Pinocchio, when they turn into the, the donkeys? <gasps> Freaky as hell. <laughs> Maleficent? Now you must deal with me and all the powers of hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even Medusa in The Rescuers is creepy and scary as hell. Oh, yeah. And now it's all Smurfy this and Smurfy that. <laughs> Okay, you know, there's a there's a guy, uh, was it C.K. Chesterton, dude who wrote. He said, um, "Fairy tales don't tell kids that there are monsters in the world. Kids already know there are monsters. Fairy tales teach kids how to defeat them." And that's the thing that drives me nuts. Is they want to lobotomize it for kids, and I'm like, "Are you kidding?" Your kids have the interwebs, and they know how to use them better than you. <laughs> and they know what's going on in Iraq. 
You think you can come up with something more horrible than that? Are you insane? I just, it sort of drives me nuts. It's like, um, why don't you give them the tools to deal with the world, rather than trying to insulate them from something that they go right around you to get at? I'm just saying. <laughs> Do I play scary games? Um, not that many. There is a Christopher Chain in the building. Christopher Chain, please come up to the information that comes in. Christopher Chain, Christopher. please come up to the information that comes in. I'm waiting for you, Christopher. Um, you mean like the Resident Evils and things of the world? I don't, I don't really play... I like spooky things like that. But usually when they involve shooting things, it gets to be a little tiresome. And just, it becomes so twitchy, it just makes me tense. The game that scared me was uh, Shadow of the Colossus, uh, which is my favorite game ever. Because you know there's a Colossus somewhere, and you know you're supposed to take it out, and you know it's like 20 times your size, and you don't know which part of rock is going to start moving and is going to be it, you know? And when the music shifts, you're like, oh no, oh no, oh no, where is he? Where, you know? So that, that kind of stuff I, I like. But the, a lot of the a lot of the, like the Resident Evil stuff is sort of the, gotcha. And that stuff just says, eh, okay. You know, like after a while, like, okay, enough already. Enough with the jumping out with a sheet and saying boo. You know? I mean I think the flood and halo are scary enough with the things crawling after you. Ah! Um, not that I have anything against scary stuff, but after a while it's like or I want to experience that just as an audience member, like like uh, The Ring, you know? Fantastic movie, very creepy, very scary. Love to watch it. Not sure I'd want to play a video game of it, though. Does that make sense? I'm not sure that would that would appeal to me. Someone else? Cool. Yes. Yes. I can't hear a word, it's so loud. I'm so sorry. Should we play tell? Did I, ever, did I ever play the sequel to Shadow of the Colossus? You mean Eco? Oh, well, it's the prequel. I mean, yeah, timeline, I guess it's supposed to come after. But yes, no, as soon as I got done with Shadow of the Colossus, I had to hunt down Eco. I had to hunt down the soundtrack to, the sh to both shows. I had to hunt down the special DVD Eco that they released with all the developmental work. Yeah, I became obsessed. I was actually just talking to a, a, a Japanese producer when we were working on a new video game. And she, and she works at Sony, and she knows Ueda-san, who created Shadow and Nico, and we just started geeking out like crazy over those shows. And I said, yes, and I have Nico. She said, oh, you have Nico? You are hardcore. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. That game is the first piece of art that I have seen in video games ever, in terms of like the James Joyce definition of proper and improper art. Um, I just, you play that game once, and it just sticks in your mind. and. and I wake up in the middle of the night just going, fuck that game, fuck that game, you know, just like, oh, it's just, it's, it, it's in my head, and it's so brilliant, it's so good. I'm, I'm writing a book on uh, mythological storytelling and animation based on my anime mythology lectures, and, you know, I go through all the different anime shows and different archetypes and everything, and I wasn't even going to touch video games because it's just too big of a topic, but I'm going to have to write an epilogue on Shadow of the Colossus and Eco, and just on the cursed lands, on the world that Ueda Sun has created of those games because it's just so fantastic. Um, and supposedly they're in development on, on the third game, and I can't wait. I was like, I asked the producer, I was like, so, so, do we know when it might be released? She's like, I don't know. And I'm like, that's okay. They can take as long as they want. Please take as long as you want and make it brilliant. I will wait. I'm sorry? 